Hello everyone, my name is Michael and welcome to another episode in this Puppeteer tutorial series. In this episode, we will see how we can capture, block and mock requests in Puppeteer. So yeah, with that said, let's get into the video. So first of all, if you don't know already what requests are, let's go on a browser and let's go on this page on Google, which, which is the images for the keyword mountain. And what we can do is right click, click inspect, and then go to the network tab. Now we have to refresh the page in order to get all the requests. And as you see, basically what the requests are, the request that the website does in order to get any of the assets that are necessary to load that certain page. For example, to load this page, we need to get our profile data, we need to get some data for the word mountain, we want to get the CSS, the JavaScript, we want to get each image, so each image has its own request, as you can see right here, and then yeah, basically any assets that, that the website needs or that certain page needs, it does a request to get that. And that's what the requests are. So with that said, let's go back into the code. And first of all, let's create a new file and let's name it requests.js. And let's go back on index and copy the template. So this is some template we can use. We are basically requiring public here. We are creating the new browser we are creating the new page and then we go to a certain page now for this tutorial we will use this page for our example so let's copy the url and paste it here so first of all we will do node and then requests.js and there we go it opens the page so what i want to do now is start capturing the requests now in order to do that we we can do before we visit the page we can call a function called page on so page on basically listens to events that happens on that page and we want to listen on requests so whenever a request happens we want to get that request as a callback and do something with that request so for now what i would like to do is console.log the request url so let's test it out now we are capturing requests as they happen so the moment that they happen, we will console.log the URL of that request. So let's do that. Let's test it out. And as you see, here we have the URLs for the requests. And let me zoom in. So now that's how you can capture a request. And you can get a lot of data from that request. So let me show you some examples. So first of all, as we saw, we can get the request URL. But let's say we only want to get the URLs for each image. So if we go on an image and we go on headers, as you see, that image has a URL that starts like this and everything else is dynamic. But if we go on each request for that image, it stays the same. So let's see how we can filter the requests. So we will only get the images, the image URL that contains this string right here. So the way to do that, we can run an if statement. Actually, here we have to do a URL. And we can run an if statement. So if the URL dot includes, and if it includes this part, then we can console.log the URL. So let's run the code again. And now we should only get the images URLs. And there we go. And if I start scrolling down, as you see, I get more and more images because Google loads the images dynamically. So by searching mountain, there are millions of images and they are not loaded all at once but they are loaded as I'm scrolling down. So as you see, as I'm scrolling down, new requests are happening. So now let's see what other information we can get from that request. So let's go back. And if we go here, we can get all of the information that are shown here from our code. So we can basically get the headers, we can get the payload, we can get the preview, which preview is basically the response. And then we can also get the response. So now we cannot see anything here, but if we go and open a JSON file or a, or a JS file, as you can see, we can, we can get the code from that JS file. So let's see how we can get the response. So first of all, let's filter the requests by the fetch ones. And now let's get specifically this request right here, which has some JSON. 
So I want to show you how you can filter the request to only get this request and then get the JSON data from that request. So basically get the response. So first of all, let's copy the URL and here I'll do that. But basically we have to remove this part because usually the URL isn't always the same. But this part, I'm certain it will be the same. So I'll leave it as it is. And let's start getting some data. So first of all, let's make it prettier. So like we can say console.log and we can say the URL. Then we can console.log the method by using this function right here. So we get the request and we get the method from that request. And that's basically to see if that request was a post request, a get request and all that kind of stuff. Then we can get the headers by using this function right here. So we do request dot headers, which basically get the headers. And then that's a JSON. So we will do JSON dot stringify. So we can make that JSON a string and then console the log that. So let's log that stuff for now and see what we get. And then we can go on the response side. So as you see, we get the URL, which is this one right here. And then we can see this method was a post request and we also get the headers. Now, in order to get the response of that request, what we have to do is create a new event listener and say page on and then we have to listen on response because here we're listening as the request is being requested. But to actually get the response of that request, we have to listen to this event. Actually, what we have done right here, we can do the same to here. So let's copy that and we can comment that out for now. And we can use that, but instead of request, we will use response. Now we will get the same data because even after we get the response, we basically get the same URL method and headers. So we can leave it as it is. And then to get the body, what we can do is console the log and let's say response equals to and then json the stringify and then we can say response the json now this has to be asynchronous so let's go ahead and do that so let's make this event asynchronous and then i'll wait for the response and we get the json of that response so let's run our code and it says okay so we probably have to remove this it says response that method is not a function okay so we cannot get the method from the response event Let's run it again. Hopefully we don't get the same error. Okay, good. So as you see, now we get the response correctly. So that's how we can get the body of the response for any request that we want. Now let's see how we can block a request. So let's comment that out. And we have to go back to the request event listener because we don't, we don't want to wait for the response but we want to block the request before it even gets a response. So to do that, we have to listen on the request event. And now what I want to do is, let's say I want to block the new images from loading. So what I can do is, first of all, reload the page so I can get the new requests and go to an image, get the URL of that image, basically the part that, say, that stays the same, copy it, go back, put it here and what we can do is say if the URL includes and in that URL then we can abort that request and basically by aborting we are blocking that request from happening so we are blocking that request from succeeding from getting a response okay so we get an error it says request interception is not enabled and that's because we have to enable request interception Okay, so to do that, we have to go before we listen to the request right here and add this function. So what that does is it says the request interception to true. So now we can intercept requests. So let's go back and rerun our code. And now if I rerun the code, there we go. So it works normally. And as you see right now, those images are not blocked and I'll explain why. But if we scroll down, as you see, none of the other images are loaded so it does work now why those are not blocked is because they are not the same address they don't have the same url the same start of that url so if we right click and then open image in new tab 
as you see the URL of the image starts with data image and it's basically the data image URL where those images right here had this URL and that's because Google pre-renders a part of their website so it loads faster so as you will see if I reload the website this part of the website loads immediately and that's because that's pre-rendered so now we saw how we can block a request and now you can use many different ways to do that so let's do let's use another way so we can say if the request has a resource type of an image so if the request is an image then we do the same thing so that's another way to block images and that's a more dynamic way but as i said it will still show the first images but it will block the new images now let's see how we can mock a request and by mocking a request, what I mean is when the request happen, we can intercept that request and give a specific response we want. So an example would be we can replace all the new images we are loading with an image that we want to show. And that also works for JSON, JavaScript, CSS, and all that kind of stuff. So when the request happen, we can find that request and we can give our own response and not the response it should have. So let's see how we can do that. So we can utilize this part right here. And what we can say is request dot respond. And here we can pass the data that we want to respond as. So we can pass the status. We can pass the content, which can be image, for example, a PNG image. It can be a JSON. So in order to send a JSON, we can do application plus json and that's how you can send json and you get the point now you can google those content types so you can see all of the possibilities but for now we will use our example which will be or a png or a jpeg we can change that later also you can pass the body now in order to show an image we actually have to download an image and we will read that image and we will basically set that code of the new image by reading the image as the body. Now, if you want to send, for example, JSON, what would you do is JSON dot stringify because you actually want to send a, a string and not the actual JSON. And here you will pass the JSON. But for now, let's do this and let's do something like that. And now let's find an image to replace all the images with. So let's go back. And let's say I want to replace all the images with this image right here. So what I can do is right click, save it, save image as, and there we go. So I saved the image as the as JPEG. So let's replace that with JPEG. And here we will read the file, which is JPEG. And let's rename it to image. And there we go. So yeah, let's test it out. So let's run our code. And we get fs is not defined so let's define it so we can say const fs equals to require fs and now if we scroll down you will see all the images now are replaced with the images with the image we downloaded and yeah that's a cool example of how you can mock a request so yeah that's it for this video let me know down in the comments what you would like to see next also hit that like button and subscribe if this video was helpful and also share the video to your friends so they can also learn how to how to capture, block and mock requests. By the way, code will be down in the description so make sure you check it out.